hang on a minute. All right. Anyone who's listening um, out there and not on this call on video, you can see it live stream. Go to the legislative website, finance committee website, and hook live streaming. You're in, and thank you. We are in. So we are live. And okay, Treasurer Pierce is okay. the first one on our agenda, and we're just um, looking for any information you can give us. I know we had some commingling of funds that you had to do. You sent us a memo on that, but mm -hmm. an idea of any of the fiscal implications you're seeing at this point. Certainly. If you don't mind, I'd just like to check to see if some of my 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 uh, co-workers are on the phone. Um, okay. Is Will on the phone? I am, Beth. Okay, so Will Crewald is our chief financial officer and uh, uh, and one of our experts on this. Uh, I don't know if you have Dan and or John with you. I'm on I, have, I have stuff yeah. from okay. Ashlyn. Yeah, I'm here so as Ashlyn well. Is our, Okay, so Ashlyn is, our, Ashlyn is our policy director, and Dan Currier is our cash manager. And just to give Dan a little credit here, um, Dan has been with us before I started. So I started in 2003, and uh, he's one of the best intuitive people I, I know in terms of managing your cash and sees uh, the trends right, right, right from the beginning. So I just wanted to point him out, and Will has built the uh, uh, built this system uh, even further. So I think we've got a great team and I'm confident, I'm going to start off right with that. I'm confident that we will be paying all of our bills and paying them on time without disruption. And I'll go through a little bit of how we're okay. getting there. And what That's the first are. positive so. information I've heard in a couple of weeks. So. <laughs> um, that's good. Okay. So uh, Beth, that's good. Um, Beth, this is Jane Kitchell. I just wanted, yes. um, if you're not aware, um, we're, um, we ha you have members of the Appropriations Committee as well. We thought um, for time demands that it would be easier to have one <laughs> have you, uh, come just... Dan, are you all right? Yes, my iPad just slipped. I'm good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this case uh, I, thing well, doesn't hold up. <laughs> so I just wanted to let okay. you know that um, we have... Uh, not only the finance committee, but we have as um, the members who are able to make it up the Senate Appropriations Committee as well to hear your testimony. Well, excellent. Thank you very uh, much, you Senator Kitchell. It's a pleasure. It, it's good to hear from all of you. And again, I hope everyone is safe and their relatives are safe as well. And getting back to my positive news, uh, we expect to make all of our payments on time, you know, without disruption. Um, and let me walk through a few pieces. I'm hoping um, someone po put the graph uh, that we sent up on the screen. Is that up for folks to see? It's, I think that's one of the documents that Ashlyn sent us. So yep. it's in your so emails. Yep. So I won't say I can graph. absolutely read it, but okay. Okay. Well, can it's, Faith it's, put it on uh, the screen? Uh, Faith is uh, doing double duty with the several things, but I'm coming. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's in your emails. <laughs> okay. There you go. Uh, we've got a lot of new things we're all doing, so uh, uh, we can all be patient and try to work that out. And you have, obviously know patient is my best skill, so hey, patience, but hey, joking on that. So um, is it okay to start on this graph? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is a, 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 a summary of our cash over, over a number of years. And uh, you see that we started, uh, we've got an average down at the bottom. So if you look at the chart on the bottom, it's up. Uh, average, average of fiscal year 04 to 09. And what that shows you is what our cash flows look like by month, end point of each month. And then you see at the end, it'll have the average and the high and the low period. And if you look at it, uh, the good news is as you look at the average, and it started off an average for those first several years of $130 million dollars average cash position, you see it's um, moved up, it's had a little up and down, but at this point in time, you see that it moved up from um, in 2016, 17, 18, 19. Somebody needs to mute. Okay. 
Okay. And that is because you folks have done a really good job. I want to thank um, 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 all of the money committees and, and particularly, uh, no disrespect to finance, but uh, the, uh, the appropriations committees for fully funding our reserves, creating new reserves, rainy day funds. Um, and that reflects very well on us and what puts us in a very good position. I want to thank the finance and ways and means as well for working with us on this uh, I, I'm impressed with the way that this um, um, this assembly has done that job, worked and thought through and been and forward thinking, and it is serving us well in this crisis. We've got a lot of work to do. That doesn't mean that we're not going to have uh, issues to, to resolve, um, but uh, you, this was very, very much a, um, a contributor to our success to make the payments. So again, looking at that chart, you see that uh, our average is moving up. Uh, those, that's again a good thing. And if you look at the graph below it, you see the the months to date. And while it's a little bit, you know, from one year to I mean one year to the next, a little bit um, skewed. You see an average. So the bottom line you see is an a, uh, average for 0409, and you see that there's a little bit of a trend to this thing, and even though it's a little bit. Um, um, tough to follow. And you see that uh, um, our cash position in December uh, is a little low in September. Uh, you see a little dip in April. Um, those are when the Act 68 or the education payments uh, go out the door. I'm going to see if I get this right, Dan. So September 10th, December 10th, and April 30th, if I did that correctly. And uh, so you see a little dip. Um, on the other hand, on December 1st, we collect some money uh, from the from the state of excuse me from the municipalities that are payers, and we also do that on June 1st, and you see that uptick there. Um, so uh, it's it's a little bit uh, ups and downs, and even within each month, it's it's there's an up and down. And this chart is for unrestricted cash. Uh, we also have restricted cash, and let me explain the difference. <coughs> And why this works in terms of making sure everybody, um, uh, every every payment can go out the door. So unrestricted cash would include the um, it's a pooled cash. So it's all, all all the different funds are in there together. Um, it would include the education fund. It would include the general fund. Um, I'm gonna uh, hope that I get this right. Either Will or Dan correct me if I'm wrong. But the transportation fund, some of our a lot of our operating funds. Uh, and it's a pooled cash position, which means that uh, each fund has a uh, has a uh, um, a portion of it, and in their and in their primary funds, in the fund itself, the ed fund or the uh, general fund, for instance, it will have a cash position, which is reflected as a as a portion of that pool. Um, so we do pool our money, and that actually helps us. As we're as we're working uh, working through um, managing you know our, our daily cash position, um, the un the restricted funds might be funds that are um, uh, segregated per statute uh, that uh, can't be for, for whatever reason a regulatory issue a federal federal issue um, that uh, that um, that are are, are segregated and and, and um, essentially um, um, uh, not part of that uh, that uh, unrestricted cash. So we have money in that that little uh, account as well. And right now, I think we have about $100 million, if I'm correct, Will, in our, in our restricted cash fund balances. Yeah, that's correct, Bill. So, yeah, so thank you. So, again, um, you know, we have a fairly healthy position going into this. That said, we're taking some hits. You know, we uh, we are pushing out the uh, uh, the um, um, the income tax. Uh, they're pushing out the uh, uh, the uh, sales tax and uh, meals and rooms into uh, into the next fiscal year. Uh, we have analyzed that. Will and Dan have spent a great deal of time looking at that, and our our estimate is that we will be able to to uh, to. Um, Pay our bills, uh, despite that, and uh, and we're comfortable that uh, uh, our belief is that there will be no disruptions um, based on just our balances and the unrestricted funds. That said, uh, you always want a backstop. Uh, go, you know, uh, uh, we were talking about can openers before we started, and somebody somebody's electric can opener wasn't working, but they had that they had the backup. Um, so. 
uh, took a little bit more, you know, with the uh, with the risk in doing that, but you had the plan. Uh, so one of the back steps that are already in statute is that in December, uh, so from December 10th to this, um, uh, I think it's for a month again, um, uh, I'm going to uh, check with Dan from December 10th to January 10th. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then from, uh, uh, from uh, um, I'm going to get this one wrong, from June 15th to July 15th. We have a um, a, um, uh, a window as well, and what those windows say is that uh, if you ha if you are having a temporary cash uh, position uh, issue, you may borrow from restricted funds. Obviously, when you borrow from the restricted funds, you have to pay back the interest on that, so you're paying back the interest to those funds. But it gives you a little bit of flexibility, and by doing that, and again, there was. Uh, the December 10th was because, as I said earlier, that's when the uh, education payments go out that first round. Um, so it gives you a little bit of a, a backstop. It gives you a little flexibility, and it, and it saves you money because you don't have to go out and do a um, a, a bond or a ban a, a, a bond anticipation. Excuse me, a revenue anticipation note um, in the in the um, in the in the markets because when you do that, it costs you more money. And so this is a uh, less expensive and more flexible way of doing that. Back in two th September of 03 was the last time we did a borrowing. It was about $48 million. And to be very candid, uh, uh, while we borrowed it and we had, a, I think it uh, um, uh, was from uh, September to, uh, to about um, February, if I recall, uh, we actually didn't need it during a few some of those periods. And you're paying for it. And I'd rather be in a position where you're, you're, you're internally borrowing from, uh, from those restricted funds, again, paying back the interest um, as, as a backstop and going out to, uh, to the bond market. Um, so, uh, so we think that, again, our cash position is strong enough to, uh, to, to meet those, uh, those revenue uh, changes that pushing off those into the next year and as well as any um, – any um, um, amounts that uh, so far have been uh, uh, estimated in terms of actual losses. Um, we have backstop number one, uh, which would be, you know, uh, restricted funds uh, use, utilizing those. And backstop number two, if you had to get to it, which I can't, do not contemplate us doing that, would be to be able to do an external borrowing if needed. Um, so that's that's the way this, this works. Um, we wanted to add a little bit more to the restricted fund uh, backstop, backstop number one. And to give us a little bit more flexibility, what we wanted to do instead of having a June 15th uh, to July 15th, give it a little bit of room on both sides. So uh, uh, another 30 days, so um, uh, uh, roughly May 15th, uh, 30 more uh, business days uh, on either side of this and out to August. Um, we think that that would give us some more flexibility, and that is the request that we made uh, in a memo. So if we can put up that memo, our second um, our second slide in this presentation. Um, I don't know if people have done that yet. I'm going to do it myself. Um, but uh, it's a memo dated March 26, and it's uh, to to all of you as well as uh, uh, Senate President uh, Tim Ash and uh, Speaker Mitzi Johnson. And uh, essentially what we are asking for is more flexibility in the inner fund borrowing um, and uh, uh, putting, again, a, an additional uh, flexibility of 30 days uh, to, uh, to assist us on either side to, uh, um, uh, to provide just a little bit more room if we need that. And we also don't think we're going to need that in future years. We don't, uh, we don't want to get in the habit of doing that over an extended period of time. So our goal would be to have this sunset. Um, so um, we provided some language that uh, you know we we, and that's at the end of this um, uh, this presentation, um, um, and it shows you the statute that currently has the inter fund borrowing. Um, I understand that uh, legislative council has um, uh, made that into uh, into the proper legal lease. We're better at numbers than we are legal. Um, and, and, and has that for your, uh, uh, for your review. Um, but um, uh, we think again, that this, this will be an extra step um, and uh, provide 
that extra uh, option for liquidity. Uh, but again, as the memo says, we, you know, and, and we, we stress again, we have sufficient cash to meet our payments. Could so I I'm just, uh, um, yeah. Beth, I'm, this is Jane. I just had something come on my um, iPhone saying Congress has uh, just passed the stimulus bill. So, uh, Excellent news. so um, Excellent. obviously that has a big impact on um, our our fiscal uh, health. So at least that hurdle is Absolutely. over now. The president just needs to sign. So it's finally yep. got through the Congress. Well, that's excellent news, Senator. We're, we're very happy with that. You know, we're trying to analyze that as you are and as joint fiscal is. Um, and uh, we're, we're obviously working and sharing information with uh, with all parties, including the governor's office. We want to understand, you know, how that, uh, you know, what are the rules around it? You know, where you, uh, you know, what it can be used for, how it can be used, uh, how it inter interacts with our cash flows. So this analysis that we presented to you right now does not contemplate that, uh, but that's certainly, um, uh, once, once we get a little bit more into the review, we'll be updating our numbers. And I also want to stress that we're updating these numbers daily. Dan and, uh, and Will are doing a great job with that. And uh, um, you know, our um, um, we're working. We're meeting twice a week with the uh, with the administration, uh, and we're keeping um, uh, joint fiscal in, in the loop as well. Uh, but that's great news, Senator. Glad to hear that. So uh, I'm um, gonna stop. And, yeah. Could I ask another question, Anne? I maybe yeah. you know the answer to this, but um, I don't. Um, if you in fact had to go in and uh, um, uh, um, take a money some of that restricted um, cash that comes with restriction you said it has to be paid back with interest um and yeah. um could you just tell us how how is that in interest determined it would be the interest rate that it would have earned otherwise absolutely you know it's interesting because um um april 30th the ed fund always has or almost always um uh, uh dan can correct me if i'm wrong on this um, a, uh, a negative cash position for, for, for a few days because those, those dollars went out. And I can remember having a conversation with then uh, uh, Ways and Means Chair Obahowski about that and, uh, and uh, why it had to pay interest <laughs> and, uh, and, the and it's essentially the opportunity cost based on the investments that we currently have. Mm -hmm. um, but um, um, uh, so this is not an unusual event to have that cash position on April 30th, and by June 1st uh, or earlier, that cash position is um, 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 in, um, erased. The negative cash position is erased, and uh, we're back to uh, uh, to, a, to a positive position. But that's the beauty of having a pooled system. So the edge fund doesn't have to go out to borrow increased cost to the system um, because again, the cost of borrowing um, in the in the uh, external markets in the bond market would be higher. And um, um, it allows us some flexibility. Um, and each fund has its own integrity, and each fund has its own um, 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 position within the uh, the pooled cash account. Thank you, Beth. Beth this is Michael Sorok, and um, we talk about restricted and unrestricted funds. It included in there, I assume, is the stabilization fund and the rainy day fund. Okay, so the stabilization and the rainy day fund are um, uh, do have their own cost centers as well, but they're part of the um, they're part of the unrestricted funds. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna is if that, I could, uh, Senator, could I ask Will if there's anything he wants to add to this? You sure can. All right, no, thank Beth, you. I, Will take it away. Yeah, I, Beth, this is well. I think I think. Could I ask? Yeah. A, okay, I got somebody's arm on video. I'm trying yeah. to find my agenda. Beth, Bobby, has, okay. Bobby has okay. a question. And Chris? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Beth, okay. I'm wondering in the stimulus package, uh, they've talked about uh, setting money aside for uh, states to be able to borrow. And uh, you looked into that and what the interest rate might be on that and if it um, would be lower than borrowing say from the restricted funds 
Okay. Well, number one, I think our rates are, um, uh, unfortunately, you know, with the market going uh, in the direction it is in the Federal Reserve, the rates are pretty low. Um, I have not checked that yet. Uh, we certainly are going to. Um, I uh, sent off uh, um, some communication with uh, NAFT, the National Association of State Treasurers, the other day uh, to, to start to take a look at this. Uh, and the treasurers uh, across the country are meeting weekly uh, to have a conversation about what's going on and what, what we can do to help each other and ideas. So we're going to take that bill apart um, um, and, uh, and look at those provisions um, and uh, um, I will be able to get an answer to you um, down the road, but I do not have that right now, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, Chris. Treasurer, I'm curious if if we grant you the permission to borrow between funds, how why would we expect that the funds would be reimbursed? I mean, what would lead us to believe there would be a swell of cash flow down the road, mm -hmm. given the current uh, projections? Well, we've done that. We've looked at the uh, at the projections, and we've done some uh, um, scenario analysis, and and worked with uh, uh, Jeff Carr, the economist, the administration, joint fiscal to look at uh, what the revenue losses and revenue deferrals into the next fiscal year are, and we are confident that we have sufficient cash. Um, to, to meet our needs. Um, you know, there are some questions about financial statement preparation that need to be um, um, hammered out. Um, and uh, I'm not the expert on that, um, but um, um, we're going to continue to try to try to get some resources for that. Um, um, I happen to be the president of the National Association of Auditors, Comptrollers, and Treasurers. And while treasurers are, um, don't do the financial statements. Um, clearly, the comptrollers are involved in that process, and the auditors are involved in the uh, in the review of that. So we are going to be working with our resources with NASDAQ to try to help us as well as some very competent people in finance and management. But that is not um, our particular area of expertise. That said, we have sufficient cash to meet our requirements and to pay our bills and to um, um, uh, to, to move forward. And again, we're going to catch up with that in July. Obviously, there's going to be some impact to specific funds. I know you've been looking at the Ed Fund in particular. Um, and again, um, um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the final position of that fund in, um, in, at year, year end is uh, something that um, needs to be discussed. Um, but uh, that's not the, um, the um, uh, uh, area that we're, we're concentrating in our on, in our presentation today, but we will be happy to assist folks that are, will be working on that. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions for the treasurer? Okay. Hearing none. Thank you, Beth. Uh, thank you. And again, I want to compliment my staff. They've done a great job um, in um, and doing the, uh, um, the the contingency planning, and uh, and my deputy Michael Clausen, who's not on the phone, but he's he's the uh, captain of our of our uh, of our of our work remote processing work teams, and uh, uh, they've all done a great job. And I uh, just want to say thank you to them, and thank you for you folks in the middle of all this and the, what you've been doing to conduct the business of the state and keep us moving. So thank you very much for your good work, okay. and take care. Actually, okay, thank Beth, you. Beth, I actually have one. All right, we have one more. One follow-up question. There you go. Your, yes. Your news sounds, uh, I don't know if I want to say promising that we don't have a cash flow problem at this point, but if things go south in terms of borrowing, uh, just generally, I don't know if you can answer this now, what opportunities may be out there for the state of Vermont? Well, again, some states are in worse shape than uh, and others, and some have already done some uh, borrowing out in the market, um, um, uh, typically revenue anticipation notes, which is a, a, um, a note um, essentially going out to the market uh, in expectation of, of, of future revenues. Um, and uh, so they're doing different things um, um, to, to meet their needs. Uh, we're in a more fortunate position uh, because we do have it with the with the great work of, uh, of the General Assembly, 
uh, to have sufficient reserves uh, as we move forward to help us through this. Um, so our first thing would be into fund borrowing. Um, and again, we're asking for the extension of that period for one year. Um, just And it will, it will um, um, uh, go back to its, its still we have authority for into fund borrowing, but for a shorter period going forward. Um, and we do have access to the markets if we need to. One of the things that um, um, buried in the 600 some odd pages of the uh, stimulus bill um, is a section uh, called Ford, um, section 4003. And what that did was, and we spent a lot of time on that, the treasurers across the country, um, investment um, um, uh, uh, professionals across the country um, um, to, um, to, to, to tweak that section a little bit to free up some of the, um, there was a log jam in the um, in the um, in the markets, um, a lot of outflows from institutional funds and and uh, and and no buyers at the time, um, and uh, consequently there was a, a, a some really high cost to borrowing. The, uh, with that section of the stimulus bill, that's going to free up that market. It already has just uh, by by knowing that that's out there. And um, uh, so there, there are options to do that uh, should we need to. And uh, we have the authority to do that um, in the treasurer's office to do short-term borrowing. As I said, the state has not done short-term borrowing since, um, uh, since uh, fiscal year 2004. Um, and uh, uh, we hope not to have to do it, but we certainly have the capacity to do it if necessary. Thank you very much. Okay, other questions? Okay, so I think that's it. Thank you again. Thank you again. This good Thank news. you for the service. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We'll Have a good day. And again, thank you for your service. Okay. Thank Bye -bye. you, viewers. All right.